Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome yours truly and Hope College Junior, Miss Rose Thompson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Thank you. 
Side of the box field off to Duncan Long. Side Rose Thompson and Noah Russo. It's conference game number two of the regular season here to pack and rock at the boss field. That's Hope College in their alternate orange and their traditional road table starting line is brought to you by Lawrence Advantage Work Financial Planning done right for all your financial planning needs for Lawrence Com for the Brins of Albion. It's Cortez. Jamel Davis, Quinn Armstrong, and Caden Neblin. Flying Dutchman. It's Dykehouse, George, Thomas, Free, and Granges. We are set to go. And the tip is won by the Britons. And to bring things up is Jamel Davis, Jr., the junior from Ypsilanti, Michigan. The ball goes inside. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Backing inside. Shot is off the mark. For Caden Evelyn. And Albion will regroup. Evelyn top of the key. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Armstrong driving inside. Strong move with the right hand. Rolls around and gets an Albion. And right away, we're going to Albion's going to try to do all day. They're going to go in the paint with Armstrong and Evelyn. And they're going to try to exploit their size advantage. Yeah, absolutely for this Hope team to really shut down the, the post presence of Albion. But also, Hope's post presence is really effective too, so. And George for three gets it to go and the end one. Hill headed to the line to try and complete Albion the four point play. And that foul's on the 14, Chanel Davis Jr. It'll be his first, team's first of the afternoon. That was a beautiful play by George. Like we were highlighting before the game, it's going to be really important for Hope to be able to shoot from the field today. So that's right out the gate. That's never going to hurt. So George on the line, trying to complete the four-point play and make an early 4-2 to two Dutchman lead. The shot is up, and it is no good, and it's rebounded by Quinn Armstrong. It's the Britons in transition. Davis to Garland. Garland drives inside, kicks out. 18 on the shot clock. Armstrong with it now, hoping his zone. 12 on the shot clock. Inside is Ebling. Ebling working on Granger. Ebling, five seconds. Ebling up with the left hand and gets it to go. That's such a patient play. He just doesn't let it come to him too quickly. Finishes. The great soft touch on the left hand. That's dangerous, so that one one on one game in the post. It's hard to stop. Dutchman, 22 seconds remaining on the shot clock. 1737 remaining in half number one. Albion with the early 9-7 lead. Dykehouse to inbound, baseline left. Finds range on the top of the perimeter. Back to Dykehouse. Dykehouse drives inside. Right down for all the way for the And we're not a bit nine to two. That's a beautiful take from Dykehouse. He didn't hesitate, got past the defender and out. The Albion defense did not step in to stop him. If that keeps happening, this offense is going to look good. And the same thing happens on the other end. <laughs> yeah, Phil yeah. was patient there too. And both defenses struggled a little bit early on. They're, both are playing very aggressive. As you can see, they're coming out far on the bigs. Something to watch as pick and roll offenses tend to beat them. 
That was a beautiful screen and roll look from Granger and Thomas on that play. Um, seemed to look like it was super easy for them to slip that ball screen, so it'll be a good look to be, take advantage of today. And it's 11 to 11. And it's picked up by George. George in transition. George with the left hand draws some contact. And it's really Tyler George. Mike Dick is having something happening. That's beautiful. This home team is really answering with effort and composure. They're coming out really strong. That's good to see. Armstrong inside, and he misses the easy layup. Armstrong is on the rebound. Take it, that's a go. And it's going to be off the out of play and will stay with the Britons. Great battling by both teams as we're seeing Armstrong, who's not nearly as large as the Breeze and Rangers of the world. He's able to compete and get his hook shots up. Unable to fall there is something to keep watching. So Mason Offal comes in the game for Sam Bree. The inbound, it's Evelyn looking inside. Strong move with the right hand up off the glass. Good. They're knotted at 13 apiece. Granger in transition. Granger with a strong hand. Ball and one. They're going to count it. And Granger will get a chance to complete the three point ball. That falls to number 10, Josh Powers. That's his first. Team second. That was a great lack of hesitation from Granger on that play taking it out of bounds, sprinting the floor. Obviously, the Albion defense wasn't set and in place to stop that look. Again, effort play pays off, gets to the line. And comparing this to the game we just saw a couple of days ago, it seems the speed and pace has just picked up so much, and both teams definitely know what this game's worth. 15 to 13, the early hope lead, 15, 55 remaining. They in half. It's Davis on the perimeter. Outside, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Davis working on Dykow. Davis for three, nothing but net and silence is the way Makes it look easy. No hesitation, just knocks it down. But some players on that short shot clock situation might that might have a pressure impact on them. Not in this case. George the offensive rebound, it's Thomas. And now Dykow, 14 on the shot clock. Dykhouse drives inside, kicks out. Thomas, ball face, eight seconds remaining. And we get a whistle stop in play. And it'll be an offensive foul. It'll be his first, his first for the afternoon. And that was a great job just setting the feet of the Albion defense. Everyone's moving around, getting involved. And great job drawing the charge. Sixteen, 16 to 15. The early Albion lead. Fifteen on the shot clock. Six outside. Three point attempt. Off the mark for McAbee and inside is even. He cleans up. And we're constantly just seeing Evelyn's length. He has long arms and he's just snatching these rebounds against a slightly shorter Mason Apple. Yeah, that was a unfortunate positioning of the Hope defense on that play. Just happened to come off the, the rim a little funky where it landed in the hands of an Elvian player. And again, those offensive rebounds, they're good at finishing, finishing it on the second try. George drives baseline, he's fouled. And they'll head to the charity strike to shoot a pair. Another great aggressive take to the rim. That's really important. Tyler George coming out the gate, not hesitating. No, definitely seems to have like a chip on his shoulder or something out here to prove it. Not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> the first shot is good. Joe Wilkins and Breeze check into the game. Out from Thomas. And George will try to complete the set of free throws. It's 18 to 16, the Albion lead, 14 23 remaining in half. Number one, and the back end of two is good. <laughs> 20 seconds on the shot clock, Ebling inside working on three. 
and three will be called for a foul. Coach Mitchell can't believe it. He wants a get it, but it's his first team's second, and team's second foul. Coming to the game for Alvin, number 22, Juan Terry, the junior from Bernie, Illinois. A persistent effort there to by the Hope defense. Fortunately, called for the foul, but they're doing what they do to keep the ball out of that area. And Sam Reed picks up his second foul. Granger getting ready to come in the game, and he does come in for Granger, number 51. And that's unfortunate for Hope because Reed. He's six nine. He's very good at battling down in the paint, and hopes a little short on the bigs today. So, definitely need him to stay out of foul trouble. Two points, nine forty-two. So even gets it to go, and it's twenty to seventeen. The Albion lead. Ranger inside to Oppel. Oppel strong. Good find. That's a great, great look by Granger. Really good court awareness. Found on the backhand. Bounce pass through three. This puts it right in Apple's hands to finish the ball. Armstrong, Davis, Davis working on Wilkins. Walker oh. looking shot. My goodness, and he gets it to go. This guy can't miss. He's already at three of three from three for a team that's shooting 29 percent from deep this season. He's definitely looking to change that. 23 to 19, Stranger. Looking inside, strong move, off the mark, rebounded by Oppel, kicks out to Wilkins. Wilkins, jump stop, off the glass, no good. Tipped out and belong to the Britons. A lot of contact early on. Again, this is a highly contested conference matchup. I think both of these teams really have conference title aspirations. Uh, Alabama's only lost twice so far this year. Hope has performed uh, well so far in the conference, beating a tough all of that team. So, uh, plenty of stake, or plenty, plenty at stake um, for both teams. It's Garland. Over to Perry. Perry. Perry with a patient shot. Great job by McCabe, by McCabe attacking the lane, able to just get the quick dump off. He drew the defense onto him by coming up the middle, and a great job. Good luck. Ranger puts the ball on the floor, tries to spin, runs into trouble. Oppel, shot is blocked, it's rebounded by Dykhoff. Back inside, Oppel, strong move with the right hand. No good, but we'll have to line to shoot a pair. Good look by Apple. He is a little undersized in the post. Doesn't seem to slow him down. Still keeps his footing. Gets a good stop. Goes up strong, gets the contact. And Matt Zanser comes to the game for this Dutchman team. Provides some physicality on defense. The back end of two is no good. And so 25 to 20, the five point Albion lead. Just north of 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Perry regains his balance. McCabe over to Garland. Garland back to McCabe. Three point attempt is off the mark, but it's rebounded by McCabe. 18 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Three-point attempt is up. Nothing for McCabe. And all of a sudden, it's an eight-point lead, the largest lead of the night for Albion. And McCabe's doing a great job slashing so far. He's shown an ability to get to the paint. He's done well setting screens and showing off a little bit of range. He's definitely a matchup problem for this home defense. Thomas rises and turns up for two. 28-22. And Thomas gets on the board for his first points of the afternoon. See that elevation from Thomas. He juked out his his defender, got up in the air, hesitated, hang time. It was impressive to see, and he finishes the ball. Ball goes out of play. It'll go to the Dutchman as Bikas checks in, and out comes Oppel. So Oppel did his piece. And 28-22 now, 11-18 remaining 
in half number one. And that was phenomenal defense by Joe Wilkins coming off the bench. He's gotten a lot more minutes recently because of his hustle, his effort, and his ability to defend on ball. Granger on the elbow finds Thomas. Dribble handoff on that play. Off the mark for Zanster, but Wilkins rebound. Off the mark, tipped out of play, and it'll stay with the Dutchman. 10.59 remaining in half number one. Wilkins to inbound, baseline left. Inside for Bike is Tango at the top. It'll be a jump ball. And possession arrow favors the Dutchman. So Wilkins will inbound, baseline left. And as is a fish of both offenses have been so far, the defense hasn't been great. So I like to see a little better switching by Albion and Hope. And just keep moving. Thomas. Granger drives inside, jump stops, goes up, strong move with the right hand, and gets it to go. Two possession game courtesy of Preston Granger. Again, such composure from Granger on that play. Didn't hesitate off the dribble, ran into three defenders. Again, kept his footing, finished strong through the basket. Didn't even need to get contact, but still finished. Oh. <laughs> Garland. Strong ball screen look from Albion offense. They're going to call a blocking foul. <laughs> and George comes back into the game. And so far we've seen a lot of Albion's offense being dribble handoffs at the top of the key until you can find a little post room, then they throw it in there and try to get a good post shot up. It'll it's not what they did there though. And the shot was tipped by Thomas, not a play. And it'll stay with the Britons from Albion. It'll be Davis to inbound, baseline left. 18 seconds on the shot clock, Evelyn back to Davis. Davis drives inside, awkward looking shot with the left hand off the mark, but it's Armstrong battling on Dykhouse. Bikus with a strong defensive play off the mark, and it's rebounded by Granger. Great defensive set from the Dutchman. Dykhouse inside, kicks to Bikus. Thomas, 18 on the shot clock. Bikus with it now over to Thomas. Thomas wanted Granger. Drives, loses loses possession, scramble for possession, waiting for a call from the officiating crew. It'll be a jump ball, so it'll go to the Britons. 9.38 remaining in half number one. It's a four-point game. And that's the second jump ball so far on this Albion defensive side. Good job getting in there, ripping out the ball, and Hope's got to protect it a little bit better. So it's Garland with it now. Being guarded by Dykhouse, gets a screen from Inside is Armstrong working on Bikus. Armstrong, strong move with the right hand, tries to go up left and is fouled. And the foul will be on Bikus. That'll be his first, team sixth. Another unfortunate positioning for the Hope defense on that play. Obviously, Albion's post players are doing a great job of getting a seal and keeping them low in the paint. It's really difficult to stop someone of that size, that caliber, that composure at that place on the court when they're two feet from the basket without following them. <laughs> right, and especially when these Albion players are being so as aggressive as they have, it's pretty much impossible to get through without getting a, a couple foul calls. And Armstrong's shot is good. And coming to the game for the Britons is number 34, Devin Holmes, the sophomore forward from Redford Township, Michigan, product of Renaissance High School. Dykehouse, just north of nine minutes remaining, and Garland will be called for a foul. That'll be his first and team's fifth foul. So it'll be George to inbound right in front of the scorer's table, and he finds Dykehouse. Granger to Vree, top of the elbow, back to Vree. Sam Vree, my goodness, throws it. 
And Albion will call a timeout. It'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. 30 to 26, your score, 902 remaining in half number one. So Rose, we talked about coming out early, coming out strong, taking it to him for this Hope team. And then Noah, you talked about um, Albion needing to push turnovers, Albion needing to uh, win the game down low. Noah, what have you seen from this Albion to this four point lead? Well, they've done half of that so far. Down low, they've done extremely effective and have done a good job playing through Ebling and Armstrong. Despite that, they haven't forced the turnovers. Hope's done a much better job keeping the ball. Uh, credit out to their guards and bigs holding on strong and doing a decent job rebounding. And we'll see how this plays out. And then on the Hope side, uh, Rose, you talked about Hope needing to be aggressive and get out to the gate. That came in that on paper is a lot better than this Hope team. But it's only a four-point game with eight minutes left to go in the half. What do you think is attributed to Hope's success early on? Um, the biggest thing I'll say is effort and efficiency with scoring. They're doing a, Hope is actually doing a good job, despite the fouls that they've been called for, of defending the post presence of Albion. I think that's going to continue to be extremely crucial for the remainder of this game. Also, Hope's been done a great job of being aggressive and finishing strong at the hoop. Something certainly to watch for as we near halftime. It's Thomas to George. George down to Granger, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Thomas for three, off the mark, rebounded by the Britons and Devin Holmes. Inside is Eveling, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Holmes drives inside, kicks out. Garland, three point attempt is off the mark for MJ Barnes, and it's Bree with a strong rebound. Eight minutes remaining in half number one. Thomas to George. George picks up his dribble, finds Bree to Dykehouse. Dykehouse off to Bree on the elbow, working on Ebling. Battle of big versus big, kicks outside to Thomas. Thomas jumps top, draws contact, and how did the charity strike to shoot two? That was tough. Good defense overall by Albion and good looks from Hope. It was a great job moving the ball around, but eventually just unable to get his feet set to draw the charge. That's good offensive persistence too from Thomas on that play. <laughs> Obviously got an isolation look from San Briant and just went after it, got the board. It paid off for him. And Mason Oppel checks in the game for the Dutchman. And as Thomas gets ready to, second, sec, to shoot his second free throw, fans, make sure to sign up for the free Front Row Hope Athletics mobile app. You can set the preferences for which teams you want to follow, including men's basketball. Sign up today. Available on Android and iOS devices. Get the free Front Row mobile app today. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 3 points in from Garland off the mark. Rebounded by George. That's a two-point game. And George will cross the timeline over to Dykehouse. Thomas with it in front of the Albion bench. Thomas drives inside. It's Dykehouse over to George. George with the ball fake. Awkward looking shot off the glass, no good. And it's the Albion's in transition. And for Albion here, they've been going away from the post a little bit. As we see the foul call. And the foul we call on George will be his first. Team sixth foul. The fans in the stands didn't necessarily agree with the call. And back to Albion's offense. They haven't been going in the paint as much because Hope's been coming down doubling. Uh, now we're going to have to see if their guards can still create plays and do it with this congested middle. Davis working on George, gets some help. Picks outside, three point attempt. Nothing but net for Josh Paolo. And he has a little something to say to the Duke crew on his way back. 6.55 remaining in half number one. George goes inside to Oppel. Oppel working on Armstrong. Oppel kicks outside to Dykehouse. 33-28. Oppel back to Dykehouse. 10 seconds remaining. Inside to Thomas. Bit of a late pass, but Thomas working. Can't get it to go. Ball's tipped around. Out of play. 
And we'll go back to the bridge. 6.34 remaining in half number one. Ranger checks back into the game for the Dutchman. And on the last possession, we did see a great three-point attempt by Palo. And it might have to go back to that as Hope keeps stacking up the middle. And it's Palo with it now, top of the key. Jumper by Garland is good. And all of a sudden, the lead is now back to seven, just north of six minutes remaining. And Coach Mitchell will call timeout, wants to talk things over. It'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. 6 10 remaining in half number one. Albion with the 35 to 28 lead. Fans, the Orange and Blue Fund exists to help support the mission of Hope College and the athletics program, which have a lasting impact on student athletes and coaches. More than 500 student athletes participate in Hope's athletic this year. The gifts that you give support enhancements. Success, competitive excellence, and transformational experiences. Each year, the athletics administration team and coaches will work together to identify the greatest needs, wishes, and desires for the Hope Athletics program that cannot be addressed through other financial avenues. Learn more at hope.edu slash orange and blue fund donates today. So, Rose, if you're Coach Mitchell in the timeout, what are you telling your players down seven, just north of six minutes left to go in what has been an exciting and contentious first half? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, for a hot minute there, uh, this Albion offense wasn't be able to execute with a three-point shot, which worked out well for Hope and be able to just primarily focus on the post presence and making sure the ball doesn't get inside. Um, Albion's turned that around a little bit. The crucial shots, which has really increased this lead. I think um, just going to be a defensive awareness perspective that's going to be really important for Hope. Um, Obviously, get inside to shut down the post, but being able to transition back out and shut down the three-point shot. And it's Dykaus, excuse me, it's Wilkins in transition. Hands it off to George. 5.30 remaining in half number one. Thomas to Granger. Back to Thomas. Thomas thinks about it, now drives. Kicks out to Granger. Granger attacks inside. It's an offensive foul, courtesy of Preston Granger. It was Ebling who drew the foul. That was a good aggressive take from Granger, but he did drop his shoulder on that play. Good, good effort on the defense from Albion, being able to get their feet set. It was the right call. It was a good job by Abelang. He was standing there for a solid five seconds before Granger came into the paint and definitely anticipated that move. So five minutes remaining in half. Number one from the DeVos Fieldhouse, game two of the MIAA conference season. Three-point attempt by Ebling is off the mark. Tipped around, falls on the ground. It's picked up by George. George in transition, finds Wilkins. Wilkins to Thomas. Thomas wants Granger inside. And now he goes to him on the elbow. Granger inside, strong move with the right hand, and it's up and good. Eight points on the afternoon for Granger. The lead is now down to five. Good reverse layup look from Granger on that one. Good face-up move. Went aggressively with the left hand and finished on the right side of the rim. And the ball is kicked down the play. And Sam Bree comes in the game for Opel. And McCabe comes back into the game for the Britons. It'll be the Britons to inbound baseline left in front of the Hope bench. And Albion's going a little smaller here. Armstrong's going to be the largest man on the floor, so we'll see if they're going to try to spread it out a little bit, try to combat that whole pressure defense. McCabe, who just checked in, knows one of those guys who had a couple threes early on in the game, looking to see if they go to something like that again. McCabe with it now, being worked on by Bikus. Armstrong inside on three, beat him to the spot, and it's a two-piece for Armstrong, 37-30. to 30. The Albion lead, 419 remaining in half number one. Sam Bree finds Thomas. Bikus long inside the perimeter. Back to Wilkins. Wilkins working on Palo, finds George. George swings to Bikus, and Bikus gets his jumper to go. That's his first points of the afternoon. 
That was really good baseline shot look from Bikus on that one. Also good hesitation from Joe Wilkin on that play. Uh, keeping his footing, triple threat. Kept his waiting patiently for an effective high percentage shot. George for three. Just off the mark, tipped around and out of play. It'll belong to the Britons. George is looking for the heat check there, unable to follow. It's a fun shot, a little high arc. So looking at this Albion offense coming back down, they're gonna have to execute a little better. They've been getting out of their rhythm a little bit and need to set probably a few more high ball screens, try to set up a little more passing action. So it's, it'll be David to Barnes to Palo. Evelyn working on Breeze, double team. Halo, 10 seconds on the shot clock, tries to cross up George. Downstairs goes Ebling off the mark, and it's rebounded by Zanstra. Dykhaus in transition finds Bikus. Bikus downstairs to Breeze. Oh. Dykhaus for three, off the mark. And it's Dykhaus who gets the rebound, and it's a fresh shot clock. Three over to Dykhaus. He has it base of the anchor. Just under three minutes remaining. Bikus for three. Off the mark, no good. And you wonder why Vree didn't take that two points down low. Ebling off the mark, he's fouled. And we'll head to the line to shoot two. You definitely sense that Vree was aware of the double team that he had on him in that play. But I, did th I do think he overestimated the size of his defense on that one. <laughs> had a very easy look. Easily a head taller than both the guys that were trying to defend him on that one. Unfortunate that he didn't understand that situation correctly. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to want to be in film tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and shot number one is up as good. Number three, Quinn Armstrong checks into the game for the Britons. He's been offensive success so far this game. 239 remaining. In half number one, Evelyn's shot is good. 9 to 32, the lead is seven. Come back and forth all afternoon. This is the largest lead of the afternoon for the Britons. Sansler gets some help from the Ranger. Oppo wanted Ranger down low. Well, down low, strong move with the right hand off the mark, too strong. And it's the Britons in transition. Alongside the perimeter, rising and shooting was Barnes, but he's off the mark. It's George who crosses the timeline, approaching two minutes remaining. And we'll get a whistle. Stopping play. And foul will be on number 32, Armstrong. So it's Granger heads to the free throw line. Fans, make sure to stay tuned at halftime. We'll have an interview with one of Hope's own color, an color analyst in Jordan George. Make sure to stick around for that halftime piece of analysis from Jordan George just on the other side of the break. 204 remaining in half number one. Shot is no good by Granger. I know we saw early on last uh, in the last game against Olivet, Hope was one of those teams that struggled from the free throw line, it's really, it's gonna be imperative for both teams to shoot well down the stretch. That was unfortunate body placement from Hope Child, from Clayton Dykhouse on that one. Personally, it was a good looking charge, but unfortunately he was inside the charge arc, so he's gonna get called for the charge on that. Not the charge, excuse me, the block foul, blocking foul on that. Evening, the shot rolls around and it's good, and he'll get another. 40 to 32, it's an eight point lead. Yeah, as mentioned earlier, Albion's about 71% from the line here. They've been all right. Both teams have struggled at points as Albion's able to make both. And it could definitely come down to that if Hope's able to stay in this game. George. 20 seconds on the shot clock, it's off the top of the key, goes to Zanstra, far side. Granger cutting inside, jump stops, has to kick back out, it's tipped, but corralled by Zanstra. 10 seconds on the shot clock, it's George. George drives, strong move, George, 
I think it's fouled a little hard to the free throw line. And that was number 14, Davis Jr. Picks up a foul. And teams eight. Coach's been trying to run some high-low triangle action movement, and it's I think could be a really effective strategy if we can get our post players to finish. Um, what they were looking at in that play was a little bit of Mason Oppel, Preston Granger, um, setting down screens for each other, cutting up, and then beating their de defense. Stereotypically, you tend to have a little bit post players, if bigger bodies, to, easier to get past them on a on a cut back off the screen. So that might be something we might see from the Hope offense to continue to try to execute in the second half. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Shot from the corner for three, and it's good. That's MJ Barnes, he nails the tray. And stuff we want a story this half. Albion's hit over five threes, which isn't something they're usually known for. Uh, Hope's gonna have to get out and guard him a little better. Lead is now 12, three inside, strong move with the left hand. Lead back to 10. 40 seconds remaining. It's Garland with an out working on George. 20 seconds on the shot clock to McCabe. Defended by Oppel. Three point attempt is off the mark. It's Evelyn gets the offensive rebound. Off the mark, McCabe on the third attempt. It's good. 36 34, shot clock turned off. 15 seconds remaining in the first half. 10 seconds remaining. Get some help from Bree. Dykaus to Oppel. And Dykaus falls down and travels. And Dykaus is down. 1.3 seconds remaining in the first half. Dykaus slow to get up. And he finally does with the Albion possession. So a wasted opportunity at the end of the half. One point three seconds remaining. McCabe to inbound. Goes length of the court, finds Ebling. Ebling gets it off. It's good if it goes. And that'll take us to the end of the half. 46 to 34. The Albion Lee Conference game number two. Fans, make sure to stick around for interview with Jordan George, one of our analysts here at Hope College. Stick around the other side of the break. Joining the Beaver Match Registry means volunteering to be listed as a potential blood stuff cell donor. You can be someone secure who can deliberately save your life. If you are between the ages of 18 and 60, you can join today. This is a Beaver Match table located by the Nutrition Standard Street. You can make an easy cheek swap. In 1851, Holland's founder, Albertus Van Ralty, wanted to establish a secondary school where students could get the best education with an emphasis on Christian character. Originally called Pioneer School, Van Ralty set up classes in an orphanage on 12th Street. By 1857, the new Van Vleck Hall was completed. It provided classrooms, a library, and housing for 10 students along with the school principal. In 1862, the school was renamed Hope College, and the first graduating class received their diplomas in the spring of 1866. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future. And welcome back inside the Voss Fieldhouse Halftime Show brought to you by Lawrence and Vanisworth Financial Planning. 
Done right for all your financial planning needs. This is Lawrence of Venezuela.com. I'm joined by one of our color analysts in Jordan George. Jordan, it's great to have you. It's great to be here. Yeah. To talk about this first half, Albion came in at 10-2 overall, 1-0 in conference after absolutely dismantling Calvin last week. Meanwhile, comes in surprising 1-0. They beat a good Olivet team uh, earlier this week. What have you seen so far, really from both sides, that have led us to a 46-34 game? Yeah, well, it's obvious Albion wants to go inside predominantly. Um, Hope's experimented with his own defense here a little bit in the first half to try to neutralize Caden Ebling, who is uh, one of the best bigs in the MIAA. And Albion's hurt him, hurt him offensively. So Hope needs to really close down the driving lanes and definitely limit the second chance points. The, the number of offensive rebounds that Albion has is way too high right now. So um, I think Coach Mitchell's probably challenging his bigs in the locker room right now to step up and, uh, and pick up the rebounding effort. Yeah, so a surprising uh, from the first half from Albion. They were shooting uh, almost uh, 47%, 46% from beyond the arc. Not really a typical Albion uh, stat. They've been known to pound it inside. Um, what do you think has been so successful uh, for them in setting up their offense and able to be really dynamic from three this first half? Well, when you have bigs that are really dominant and people, I Hope obviously knows that, that, that Albion's bigs can score the ball. Uh, when they get the ball inside, Albi uh, Hope's collapsing a little bit, and then that's leaving uh, open shooters at the three. And Albion has guys that can knock down shots. I mean, especially James L. Davis. He's one of the best guards in the league, and, and he's pretty lethal from outside. So when Ebling gets it inside and is able to kick it out to Davis, that's a good look for Albion, and that's something that Hope second half. And then on the counterpart, Hope is shooting a dismal 12.5% from beyond the arc. They were shooting better from beyond the arc against Olivet. What do you think has caused some of the struggles uh, on the offensive end in the first half? Yeah, the offensive movement for Hope just hasn't really been there this half. They've been a little bit stagnant offensively. A lot of guys passing the ball and just standing and staring. So uh, I guarantee Co Co Coach Mitchell and the other Hope coaches right now are talking about offensive movement, passing the ball, cutting, and then getting guys at the arc ready to shoot the three. Um, there's just been a few too many scattered trips for Hope in this first half, but um, only a 12-point difference. Uh, we've seen throughout the season that Hope's the kind of team that can go on runs really easily. So um, I think this will be an exciting second half. And then as we get ready for the second half, about 10 minutes out, a couple of keys to a couple of keys for uh, for both sides as, as they get ready to come out of the tunnel here and then take going for the second half if they want to get their second straight consecutive conference win. Yeah, I, I'd say a big key for Albion is to just keep going to Caden Ebeling inside. Um, he's been pretty dominant in there. And then when he when he goes up for shots, Quentin Armstrong and other guys are attacking the glass and they're getting second chances. So I say stick with your offensive formula if you're Albion. Um, for Hope, I think the rebounding is a big thing. They're only down three rebounds, but it just seems like a lot of Albion's baskets have come on second chance points. They've really been hurting Hope there. So Hope needs to needs to increase the physicality um, just overall on the defensive end. 46 points in one half is a lot of points to give up. A special thanks to Jordan George as we get ready for half number two for the Voss Fieldhouse. It's conference game number two, 46-34, your score. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Lawrence and Vanderswart, we're interested in the history of our community. When 26-year-old jeweler Jacob Raven came to Holland in 1889, the northwest corner of 8th Street and River Avenue was already home to the thriving Holland City State Bank. Raven told bank personnel that he wanted to build a clock above the bank to keep the town on time, and it wouldn't cost them a cent. True to his word, Raven raised the funds with donations from merchants and local factories. High above the city streets, the tower was completed in 1892. Holland's clock tower still ticks high above 8th Street, watching over a town that still loves to run on time. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future.
At Lawrence and Vanderswaar, we are interested in the history of our community. This farm once belonged to Albertus Van Ralty, founding father of the city of Holland. And this house, built by his son Ben in 1872, has been known through the years as the Maples, due to the large trees in the front yard planted by Van Ralty himself. These trees stand today because of the industry and vision of Albertus Van Ralty. Today, the DeGraff Nature Center taps the maples and demonstrates how maple syrup was made centuries ago. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future.
half of the Albion closed out the end of the first half on a big run. Before we get going, give a little shout out to fans who support the Hope College community day in and day out. Quick shout out to Miss Jan Legree from Batavia, Illinois, listening. Thank you for supporting the Hope College program and all that you do. So, Rose, keys to the game for this Hope team as we get set to go in the second half. Yeah, I mean, I would echo what I said before the game even started. Um, just maintaining a div diverse offense is going to be really important for this Hope team. Obviously, they have had some good success with their po post looks that, um, in the first half, but they're going to have to continue to be able to knock down shots from the outside to be able to um, keep up with this Albion offense who clearly has doesn't have as, mu as much difficulty executing on the offensive end. Um, Another thing that I would point out is just, the, again, the defensive pressure and setting down the, shutting down the post players. Um, something that they did do a good job of, could have, did struggle at times in the first half. Um, but also staying out of foul trouble, it's going to be difficult to, um, you know, we we'll only have so many big guys out there that can handle the defense, the defensive pressure of, um, <clears throat> Uh, handling the post players on Albion's side of the court. Um, so we got to keep them out of foul trouble to maintain that presence down there. And then thirdly, again, just the physicality of the game. Um, important on both ends of the court. Getting on the offensive glass, shutting down, shutting that down on the other end from Albion's side of things. Um, keeping them off the offensive glass and not letting them have second opportunities. Thomas in transition. Thomas with a nice little step and gets it to go. And then Noah for Albion coming out of the break. They had a 12-point lead. What do they need to do to sustain it? Walk out of DeVos with a crucial road win. I think they just need to keep playing through James L. Davis. He's 4-4 four, four from three right now. He's been executing really well. Obviously, you'd like to get it to your bigs, but Hope's been pretty committed to shutting down the post game. And if you have to go to a guard, Davis has been a great option so far. And Dykas will be called for a foul. He can't believe it. Team's first foul. We'll start the second half. 49 to 38. It'll be Davis to inbound. Davis to Garland. Has it basically anchored back to Davis. Davis falls. He carries. And it'll be a turnover. And Davis is slow to get up. Take a hard fall. Take a look at the replay. Saw him take a spill. Took a hit from George at the end of the play. So we've read inbound to Dykhouse. And uh, to Thomas now. To Vree. To George in front of the student section. It's intercepted by Armstrong. That's the Britons in transition. Davis through the lane. He's fouled. And I'll visit a couple of fans in the first couple rows. And the foul will be called on Preston Tyler George. It'll be his second, team second foul. And so far in the second half, we haven't really seen Albion execute a good offensive play. Uh, Davis has the one single three, but that was just kind of off the cuff. I'd like to see them move the ball around and set up a good shot. Step back three minutes with the attempted rebound. Halo from way downtown, in and out, and it's rebounded by Bree. That's Thomas in transition. Thomas crosses the timeline looking for room to work. Finds Granger baseline. And Granger goes up for the shot and it's foul. And will head to the line to shoot two. And the foul is on Ebling. His first, and team's first. That was a good attack by Granger, forced the foul, and if you can get Ebeling and double, that would be huge for this Hope team as he's been pretty dominant so far. And the first for Granger, he has a 10 piece on the afternoon. 49 to 39, the lead is 10 for Albion. 20 and the shot is up and it is good.
And so it's Davis who crosses the timeline. Base of the anchor, working on George. And Garland with it, over to Palo, down to Ebeling. Ebeling being double teamed. And Ebeling travels, and it's a turnover. Uncharacteristic, really, of Ebeling so far we've seen. Kind of caught him off guard there, was able to uh, commit the turnover, and now it's uh, Hope, uh, Hope Basketball, 17 minutes uh, left in the second half. Yeah, I definitely saw some beautiful execution on the Hope defense on that play. Good help side. Just worked out that it was also Bree and Granger combination. That's duo to stop and got the travel, got him anxious on off his feet. But out kind of the foul. And Buckets good from Granger. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. 49 to 42. All of a sudden, it is a seven point game. Fans, the Flying Dutchman's next game is Wednesday, January 15th at Calvin at 8 p.m. and it's the second hundred and second game in the rivalry and will be televised on WGBU. And then Hope will return to the Boss Fieldhouse on Saturday, January 18th for a 3 p.m. game versus Adrian. And save the date for the Purple Community Men's Basketball Game against Trine University on Saturday, January 25th after the Boss tip-off is at 3 p.m and proceeds will benefit the Van Andel Institute's cancer and neurodegenerative research and science education efforts. They saw a fund an annual summer internship for Hope Student at the Van Andel Institute. Register and get your tickets today. 1650 remaining in half number two. It's a seven point Albion lead. And the runner off the glass is good. That was Cortez Garland. And Bree has it now, top of the key. Bree down to Thomas. Thomas thinks about it, ball fakes, drives baseline right. Kicks out to George. George for three, off the mark. And it's Albany in transition. Garland, Euro steps, off the mark, too strong. Tipped around, Ebling is fouled. And he'll head to the line to shoot two. And that was kind of an issue we saw last game from this home transition defense. They struggled a little bit to get back, and Davis did a good job punching the ball forward to set up a fast break opportunity. And Ebeling able to fight for the ball and get fouled eventually. And Ebeling has 12 points on the afternoon. Ebeling's shot is good. Wilkins comes into the game for Dykehouse. Wilkins is an aggressive defensive player. Ebeling to shoot the back end of two. I'm trying to make this an 11 point contest. And the shot is good. So Granger the inbound to Wilkins. Will bring the ball up the floor. And working on Garland. George. Picks up his dribble, and George draws the foul. It's Davis. Excuse me, that's Ebeling. He picked up his second foul. It's off, off the ball foul. That is second. I know you talked about foul trouble and making sure that if you're Ebeling, you got to stay out of foul trouble. Keep this team in it. Yeah, and as Hope continues to put pressure down low. It's going to be tough for these Albion bigs to play both sides. Garland for three. Nothing but net. Cortez Garland, 36 42. Greg Mitchell wants to talk things over. And it'll be a full timeout. So 56 to 42. Albion on a run, 15 46 remaining in half number two. We'll step away and be back after the break. My 32 years, I can look back at clients and realize that when I started with them in my mid-30s, I was one of many professionals in their life. But since then, their doctors retired, their attorneys retired, their ministers retired, all the key people in their life retired, but we're still there. And over time, we end up being very, very close to our clients. 
It's very hard to talk about your financial history without talking about your family history. We get to know it, we keep it confidential, and you can't help but begin to love these people. Back inside the DeVos Fieldhouse, the 14 point lead for Albion. 56 to 42, 15 46 remaining in half number two. And I think in the next couple minutes for this game, for this Hope team, it's going to be really important to regain their composure. Obviously, we've had some loosely executed offensive possessions, and Albion. Um, Executing really effectively on offense. Hope's going to have to really put a stop to that if they're going to stick in the rest of this game. And Granger misses. The He's pressured by Armstrong. Davis to Halo. Garland to Davis for three. Off the mark, rebounded by Dykehouse. Big Dyk re rebound on that from Dykehouse. Got above, elevated above. Player significantly bigger than him still came up with it. And Granger is bodied up and fouled by number 32, Quinn Armstrong, the junior four from Lansing, Michigan. That'll be, fouls number 32, Armstrong. That'll be his second. That is his second. Team's third. And the team's third foul. He has it. Now 15 on the shot clock. Three, swings court side to George, and down low to Granger. Granger working one-on-one -on -one in Evelyn. Soft with the left hand, couldn't get it to go. And they convert on the transition bucket. And it was stolen by Albion. Thomas didn't know where the pass was. But no harm, no foul, as they couldn't convert off the turnover. And we're starting to see as the foul is picked up by Garland. A little lack of composure. Now they seem to be a little rattled and the energy just seems to be falling out a little bit. As for Albion, they're getting back to creating transition opportunities for themselves. And the unforced errors are really killing Hope right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, early in this game, we did see a lot of um, just like a smooth flow from both teams. But Hope, especially executing at a high level, seeming on the same page, you know, playing their roles, diversity of scoring presence, a um, little bit falling apart from the Hope side of things. Hopefully they can bring it together, regain their composure, and stay in this game. Nice move by Davis inside, off the mark, rebounded by Granger. Dykos, outlet pass to Zanstra. Inside, Granger. Contact, no foul. Oppel with a second chance for the it's good. Ranger's struggling a little bit to keep his balance. He's had a few possessions where he goes for the contact but doesn't finish through the ball. And it's Garland now, base of the anchor. McAbee. And Armstrong will be called for the foul. And that'll be Wilson his third. That is his third Good box out from Oppel on that play. Really did not allow his, his offensive player. I was going to say defender, not correct. Other side, of the, other side of the floor. But he did not let them have a chance of getting the ball away from him. And that's exactly what Mason Oppel brings to the table. He has an extra element of physicality. And that's definitely how he's going to be earning his minutes. Absolutely. And Thomas. Far side, gets some help from Bikus. Thomas to Oppel now, top of the key to Bikus. Over to Dykehouse. Dykehouse to Bikus. Bikus to Oppel. Five seconds on the shot clock. And it's stripped and it's stolen by Albion. Off the mark. Late call on the foul. There's good defensive pressure and pursuit from Thomas. He'll be called for the foul. That is second. Team's fourth. And team's fourth. That was a great job there on defense by Perry for this Albion team. 
Did a good job getting in the passing lane from Apple. Was obviously uncomfortable at the top of the key. Uh, and almost finished at the other so other end of the floor. And the front end of two is no good. Something to keep an eye out for is not even 10 minutes have gone by in the second half and both teams are in foul trouble. We're getting close to that bonus mark. And both teams have not been great shooting free throws down the stretch. And no one in the same area code was resembling on cleanup crew at 60 to 44. Definite miscommunication there on the whole defense. I'm not really sure what happened on that. Really easy offensive board from Albion. A oh, wide open layup. That's basketball 101, learning how to box out. Thanks, Berjan. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you learn that one? That's a great question. I'll get back to you. Textbook. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And the foul will be on number 22. And the foul on number 22. Juwan, Juwan Perry, the junior, from Journey, Illinois. Team's sixth, Team's sixth foul. So hope can convert free throws down the stretch. It should bode well for them. We'll get closer towards the end of regulation. 12.39 remaining. Plenty of time left for Hope to go on a run, but they got to do it now. That's Dykehouse to inbound. 2-3, no good off the put back attempt. Scramble for the possession. And it's Thomas who gets it to Dykehouse. Ball's tipped out of play. It'll stay with the Dutchman, 16 seconds remaining on the shot clock. That was a great effort by Thomas to track that ball down, fight for it, and almost set up an offensive opportunity. Definitely seeing the Hope team struggle a little bit to finish layups right around the rim, something that normally is a huge part of their, the effectiveness of their offense. But again, we were saying before the game that them needing to diversify and shoot wide range shots is gonna be super important, but that's a fundamental piece and it's gonna be difficult for them to continue to maintain being in this game if they can't finish their shots around the rim. So it's Garland over to McAbee downstairs at Sebling. Misses the easy shot, felt the pressure from Bree. Tie up for possession. Possession will go to Albion. Good effort on players, but from both teams on that play, getting on the floor and not letting go of the ball. So it'll stay with Albion, 20 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Coach May arguing for a foul. So 11.53 remaining in the second half. And it'll be Garland to inbound baseline right. And Garland finds Eveling along the elbow. Downstairs pass tennis for McAbee. Tied up. 10 seconds on the shot clock. McAbee for three. Off the mark, strong rebound from Thomas and it's hope in transition. Thomas crosses the timeline. Really impressive defensive effort on that play from Dykehouse. You saw him come across the baseline, help two separate times on a baseline drive. Shut, shut down the Albion offense. See on that one. Definitely prob would not have been the case without his effort. Multiple times on that play. So Thomas on the line to shoot two. And the front end of two is off the mark. No good. Coming to game four. The Dutchman, number 22, Jess Hartman, the freshman guard from Maitland, Florida. Product of Bishop Moore High School. Getting some much coveted minutes early on in the season. And Ranger back into the game as well. The shot is no good. So the crucial missed free throws on account of Thomas. And the lead is still 14. Hope really struggling across the board to make free throws in this game. Again, easy, easy buckets as they say. Important, especially at this deficit, to take advantage of those opportunities. And Bree will be called for the foul. It's going to be Ranger. Ranger will pick up his second. Teams. And that'll be the team's fifth foul of the afternoon. So on the line is Armstrong to shoot a pair. 
That was great physicality down low there, fighting for those boards. And we've also seen number 34, Devin Holmes, under the game for Albion. Uh, gingerly used big. And maybe that's just for an injection of energy off the bench as Ebling and others get a little bit of a blow. We'll see if that can prove a factor. Maybe Hope will try to go after him on the other end also. And so it's Wilkins who crosses half court. His team down 61 to 46. Just north of 10 minutes remaining. Granger finds Hartman. Hartman to Thomas. Thomas out to Hartman. Hartman kicks out to Wilkins. And Wilkins stepped out of bounds. Cost the turnover. And it'll be out in possession. And Tyler George checks into the game for Wilkins. It's really unfortunate play there for Wilkins. Not a whole lot of space in that corner. Obviously an easy mistake to step on the line. It definitely seems that a theme for today would just be a little bit of common execution for Hope. They seem to have the talent. They just need to get a little more game time under their belts. The ball goes out of play. It'll stay with the Britain. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Garland finds Holmes. Downstairs to Armstrong. Armstrong pressured. The ball goes out of play. And number 14, Davis. Checks in the game. At Paolo. 10.25 remaining in the second half. 61-46, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Davis finds Armstrong. Armstrong base to the anchor, being guarded by Vree. Armstrong down low, strong move with the right hand off the mark. That's a fresh shot clock for the Britons. Halo, three point attempt, it's good. For MJ Barnes, the sophomore guard. Circumstantially, that was good execution from the Hope defense on that play. They read the ball screen right. They got on the, out on the closeout on the three ball. Just unfortunate that that was a beautiful shot. That's Nothing but net right through basket. So Greg Mitchell wants to talk things over. 64-48, 9.46 remaining in the second half. Hope's got some work to do. We'll see you on the other side of the break. In Vanderswart, we are interested in the history of our community. The early Dutch settlers knew that in order for the tiny Holland community to flourish, they were going to need the shipping industry to stop by. So they began digging the channel without help from the government all by themselves. The dream of a real lighthouse was realized in 1936 when it switched on its big light for the very first time. The ships came. The lighthouse became an icon, and the ambition and hard work of those early settlers continues to bless our community to this day. Innovation and ambition today can pay dividends for decades. Lawrence and Vanderswart, interested in our history, invested in our future. Sixty-four to forty-eight. Your score. Nine forty-six remaining in half. Number two. It'll be Albion possession. Trying to widen this lead. It's Davis crosses the timeline. Whistle stopped in play. We get a foul call, and it's going to be Hartman. The freshman will pick up his first foul, and that will send Albion to the bonus. Team six. Baseline left inbound for the Britons. It's Barnes to Holmes. Holmes inside, strong move. Right hand off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Bree. 
Great good persistence from Bree on that play. Got a tip, got a tip on the ball as the shot went up, tip the ball back to himself and finish the play. And an assist from Bria from the top of the key. That was beautiful high-low action. And it's a 14-point lead for the Britons. Left wide open was Armstrong and he two laps. Yeah, that was good ball movement. We'll set up Armstrong. I think we're about to see it. Uh, Kid Evelyn come back into the game is and three with the patient one to go. Sixty six to fifty two. Davis base of the anchor gets some help from Armstrong, rises and drains it. Talk about hang time for the for on that for Armstrong as well. Didn't hesitate, got up in the air, out jumped his defender, and beautiful shot. Very well executed. Three goes cross court to Hartman. Hartman runs into traffic, and now it's Granger on the elbow being guarded by Holmes. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Thomas rises at the free throw, and he's fine and gets it to go. So the lead is back to 14. Thomas has such a smooth game. He does great on handoff pull-ups. He does a great job with the Euro step if he drives. And he's definitely gonna be a fun player to watch as he gets older. And Davis nails the tray. Answers right back. And it's Hartman. Two, three. George for three. Off the mark. Bumble's out of play. It'll stay with the Dutchman. And Alpha checks into the game. game. And out comes three. Back to that last Davis three. He's definitely been an excellent today, as we mentioned before the game. You can't really t talk about Albion without the three point struggles, and he's made four today. And it's just been incredible to see. Thomas gets some help from Oppel. Thomas passes intended for off, but goes out of play. And we'll stay with the Dutchman. It'll be Hartman to inbound baseline. Right. 7.24 remaining. Thomas, three-point shot off the mark, no good. Rebounded by Armstrong. Ebeling inside, working on Granger. That's an offensive foul, and Ebeling quickly picks up. His third foul. Granger really took that fully, hit the ground really hard on that. Barely, really great court awareness on for him also on that play. He was just one step outside the, the charge arc, but knew where he was, knew that he could get that call because he knew, number 32 was not going to stop in his pursuit for that bucket. Thomas. Goes to Oppel. Oppel's pass is tipped by Evelyn. Oppel in for two. And Evelyn is fired up. And he'll head to the free throw line and try and complete the three point play. Well, that was some energy. Great job there by Evelyn. He's kind of a matchup problem for Mason Oppel, as he's definitely a fundamentally sound big with a lot of length. Probably would like to see him. Preston or someone else with a little more length and athleticism matchup will come. So it'll die count and be die count to bring the ball up the floor. Crosses the timeline 74 54. The lead is now 20. Just north of six minutes remaining. Oppel down low off the mark. Again, oh. struggling to execute and finish layups for the whole. Both offense are moving the ball really well, finding good looks, getting open, open like opportunities, and can't put it in through the net. Yeah. They've left so many points on the board. Absolutely. Their inability to finish. So Greg Mitchell wants to talk things over. It's a full timeout. The lead is 20. 6.43 remaining in the second half.
more than a manager, you're not just saying, wow, you came in, thanks for coming in, and, and uh, you know, this is what your investment did. It's, it's so much more than that. There's so much more going on in their lives than just these investments, and it's good to understand that totality so that you can say, well, you know, I know there's a better way of doing this, or I have a resource. Uh, I know, you know, there's some other resources that we can help you with here. So it's, it's not just financial planning. It's serving people. It's serving people and loving on people, and that's very joyful. Back inside the DeVos Field House, we're John Crispin alongside Rose Thompson and Noah Russo, 74 to 54, the 20 point Albion lead. 6.43 remaining in regulation. Billy Davis to inbound. We have press shot clock. Hope's gonna start pressing here. Dabbling to Davis. Davis to Garland. Over to Palo. For three, nails it. 77-54. Definitely seeing a lot more efficiency from the Albion offense this half. They've missed far fewer shots. Taking good opportunities. Hard to answer that. Bria's 12 on the afternoon. Seventy-seven fifty-six. And speaking of the Albion offense, it just feels like they have so many open looks. As we saw that. There it was from Oppel. Beautiful, again, beautiful execution on that charge. Didn't hesitate, got his feet stopped. Hit the ground a little more gracefully than Granger early previously in the game, but room for improvement. Right. <laughs> so it's Dykhouse working on Garland. Dykhouse to George. To Oppel. Back to George. George for three. No good off the mark. Rebounded by Armstrong. Davis for three. No good off the mark. Rebounded by Oppel. Five minutes remaining in regulation. Euro step attempt by Sykehouse. It's up. It's good. 77-58. Beautiful execution. Beautiful finish from, Di from Dykehouse on that play. Kept his composure. Finished right in the front of the rim. Three-point attempt is no good. It's George and Shins. Sorry. And I understand the pressure defense here, Bob and Hope. But it is leaving a lot of wide-open threes for Albion, and they don't seem to be under any type of pressure. So I would probably call it off and try to just play pressure half-court defense. And that is Armstrong's fourth foul and team's 10 so they'll be shooting two free throws the rest of the way and key to getting back into this one if they still have a shot they need to hit these down the stretch We're seeing crazier things happen 455 remaining you got to make your free throws and thomas misses the front end of two mackaby comes back into the game for the britons as does granger Zanstra comes in for Oppel. And the shot is good back in there too. 77-59. Hope needs to get a stop defensively. Pressure from Granger. McAbee has it top of the key. Finds Davis. Davis down the lane, kicks outside. Garland, and Garland double dribbles. 
It's a turnover and Hope possession. And that was a great defensive possession for Hope. Uh, Preston Granger hedged really well there. He kept following Davis out to the sideline so that he couldn't get any open looks and eventually forcing the travel. Dykehouse. Ranger off the rim, no good. Again, struggling to finish those layup looks. That was difficult. He was in the air. Hard to keep your balance when you haven't pushed off the floor. But still, with the, it's it comes down to composure. This team is lacking that in this game. Got a passionate response on the floor in that call. Preston Granger picks up his third. Team's eighth. Going to be Ebeling on the line. She did one and one. Ebeling took quite a shot there as he maybe wiping a little bit of blood off his face. Hopefully he's okay. Um, we have a clean last four minutes of this game. And the front end of two is good. 78 to 59. Just under four minutes remaining in regulation. And the shot is up, it's good. Dykehouse brings it up against Garland. Dykehouse to George. George to Granger. Granger driving baseline right. It's a blocking foul, and Granger had to line to shoot two. That was fortunate for Granger that his defender didn't have his feet stopped. He was definitely going, looking in like he was going to get caught for that charge. Dropped the shoulder, was going to plow through him. There was no stopping him going to the rim. Again, lucky that he did not have his feet ready to stop him on the way there. You're right. And Preston does have the athletic advantage, so that kind of played Absolutely. in there because Evelyn wasn't able to get his feet set because he just beat him to the spot. And right. Unfortunately, we're going to keep seeing Holmes free throw yeah, shooting issues. Free throws. <laughs> Department checks back into the game for the Dutchman. 3.42 remaining. And then Granger hits the second free throw. So look ahead to some upcoming games Wednesday, January 15th. The women's basketball team hosts Calvin in the latest edition of the rivalry at 7.30 p.m. Right here at the Boss Field House. Make your plans to be with us. Visit hope.edu slash athletics to learn more information or catch the live broadcast beginning at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, January 15th, and on Saturday, January 18th, a week from now, the men's basketball team host Adrian for a conference matchup at the Boss Fieldhouse. Make your plans to be with us for that conference matchup. Dykehouse hands to Hartman. Ranger. Thomas rises Way off the mark. wide. <laughs> and then Ebeling with the rebound. Davis drives inside up off the glass right down Broadway. It's good. 81 to 60. The lead is 21. Davis has just been an MVP candidate today. He's got his 19 points and has really just picked up the pace for this Albion offense and has controlled it all day. Dykehouse working baseline. Goes downstairs to Thomas. Thomas is in the scores. He has 13 on Garland thinks about it. And it's fouled. Wait for a number. And it's Dykehouse will pick up. This first ball, 81, 62, 226. We're starting to see some substitutions. Coming to the game four, the Dutchman is Vikas. Number 15, Josh Lee. He's a sophomore guard from Liverpool, Illinois, number 11. Brady Swinehart, the freshman guard from Ionia, Michigan. As Ranger, Thomas, and Dykehouse check out. And Ebeling will check out for Albion. The masterful performance by Ebeling this afternoon. Garland on the line. He makes the front end of two. And 
despite this, the score right now, it is a good opportunity for these young hope players to get good quality experience against a great team and try to make some plays. Davis. So it's 21 points on the evening. Finds Garland. Garland with the step back, tries to dance down low. It's stripped. And Vikas hands it off to Wildja. And it's Zanstra. Hartman for three. Three points. And 22. Jess Hartman. And Jess Hartman gets his first varsity points at the DeVos Fieldhouse. 65-82, under two minutes remaining in regulation. Five seconds on the shot clock, the floater is Mr. Davis. As Coach Jody May in his 12th season at the helm, Makes some lineup changes, 128 remaining. Eighty-four sixty-five. Hartman travels and it's a turnover. Unfortunate loss of balance there from Hartman. Saw what he wanted to do. Couldn't get it keep it in sequence, keep his balance to execute that play. Seconds on the shot clock. Pass goes down low. Working on bike this spring move was no good for Ken Thomas, the freshman. Zanstra. Swinehart's three point attempt is way off the mark. It's Hartman with the offensive rebound. Swinehart tries again and he drains it. So 84, 68, 40 seconds remaining. He just needed a warm up shot. <laughs> Perry with it now. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Shot was off the mark for warming. Vikas is stripped. It'll be a foul on number 22, Jawan Perry, the junior. Foul on number 22, Perry. It's his third foul. That is his third. And so Vikas will head to the line to shoot two. Shot clock turned off, 17.8 seconds remaining. And Vikas nails the first one. Yeah, and the second shot is up and good. So 84, 70, 17.8 seconds remaining. Open a full four press. Perry. And Albion will just dribble this out. And so Albion comes into the boss field house. It takes care of business, 84 to 70. Your final score, Albion improves to 11 and 2 on the season, 2 and 0 in conference. Hope drops to 1 and 1 in conference, and 8 and 5 overall. Fans, make sure to join us this upcoming Wednesday, January 15th. The women's basketball third team in the country playing host to Calvin, which should be an exciting matchup. As for Bajan Christian Rose Thompson and Noah Russo, saying so long and good night.